The Honourable Ruth Dyson. Um, thanks very much, Mr Speaker. Can I say that I'm really disappointed that at this final stage of the legislation that Labor is still not able to support it? I think it would be a, have been a really great move for every single party in this parliament to have been able to vote in favour of the bill. Um, because the um, intention, the framework of the bill is certainly sound. Um, the devil's in the detail, and that's where we have the problem with. Can I commend um, the Honourable Amy Adams, who was the minister who originally brought this legislation to Parliament. Um, it's my view that she recognised the gap that we have in our system. We don't have envir environmental um, reporting standards. We don't have any public accountability for the state of our environment. She recognised that deficiency and sought to address it. And then that same cause was taken up by the Honourable uh, Nick Smith. I also want to acknowledge the work of the Local Government and Environment Select Committee. I'm not a permanent member of that select committee. I did sit on it during um, much of the deliberation on this bill, and I think that the members of the committee worked hard to ensure that the, um, the concerns of the submitters were heard and understood, and in all but one instance were, were responded to, and that's the one instance that both the Green Party um, and Labor have um, expressed concern about in their minority reports when this bill came back to the House. F for me, it's even more frustrating because this is a lost opportunity. We all know that we were lacking in environmental reporting. We've only had two state of the environment reports done uh, in New Zealand in the last 50 years, um, both quite recently. And, and they highlighted actually the need for more regular reports on the state of our environment so that we can all monitor what is happening. We all care about the environment. Well, it's, it's hard to say if it's going well or not and then to develop robust public policy if you don't have reporting. It's impossible for our non-government organisations, our community and voluntary organisations, who work so tirelessly for environmental causes, to be able to say that what they're do, doing is making, uh, is making a difference, is having a positive impact, if again there are no measurements. The most important thing about measurements, though, is that people trust them. People can rely on them to be sound. So you have to have evidence that is independent and evidence that is based in science. And in, in this, this legislation, we miss that opportunity. Uh, I, I know there have been a number of attempts for the, to get the minister to just consider that point. He was, he was dismissive of it in his third reading contribution. And I think he's better than that, actually. I think he, he is probably a bit irritated that he wasn't able to get his cabinet colleagues to agree to changes in the legislation. But he, he demonstrated earlier an understanding of the frustration that parties on this side of the House felt about the lost opportunity, but then dismissed it in his third reading speech. We, we should have independent environmental reporting so that not just in New Zealand, but internationally, we can hold our heads up and say, we know this is evidence-based, we know it's independent. There has been no political tainting of this in order to make a particular minister or a particular party leading the government look good. I, I don't think that uh, either the Honourable Nick Smith or the Honourable Amy Adams had that in mind when they developed and progressed this legislation. But we can't say that their personal integrity would be enough to carry the debate in New Zealand or internationally. We should have been able to send a clear message from this parliament that every single member cared about envir environmental reporting and thought that it was something we should have in our legislation. Um, Mr Speaker, I suppose the other lost opportunity that is very sad, and it's been highlighted by my colleague Sua William Seo in his earlier contribution, is that this was also an opportunity for New Zealand to show leadership amongst our Pacific neighbours, who, who are the most threatened of any countries by climate change. And, and we've done nothing. So when they look to Australia and New Zealand for leadership on these issues, they're going to be so disappointed. Another chance that we had to say we care about not just the impact of decisions made in New Zealand on our environment, but decisions made in New Zealand on the environment in the Pacific. That would have been 
not, not just a good move in terms of actually monitoring the actions that we take, but a clear signal to, to Pacific countries that we cared enough about them to consider our actions and put it in legislation so that we could be monitored against those actions. So, um, Mr Speaker, as I said at the beginning, this was a bill that I think started out with a lot of hope. It did fill a gap in our legislation that needed to be filled, but it's been a lost opportunity. It, with just a few changes to the provisions in Clause 18, then all parties in this Parliament could have agreed to it, but that, that wasn't to happen. So I hope that in the future we're able to get better progress on this and that I, we can I, I regret, truly have I, I robust standards of member, reporting. Um, but I, I do interrupt her because the time has come for uh, me to leave the chair. This bill is set down for further consideration uh, next sitting day and the House stands adjourned until 2pm today.